Marty's Gang. This is Musically Incorrect. We're going to be ranking Aussie's seminal 1981. Wait, is it 81 or 1980? Well, actually, I think it had two releases. It was like 1980 originally. And yeah. that dates, I think, was released in 81. Right. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think so. It no, is bl- Either way, it is Blizzard of Oz. Yes. Yep. And uh, we're going to do worst to first on this one. Um, quick question before we start the tracks. Otto, when was the first time you heard the album? You know what? That's funny that you said that. I was over at my mother's house looking through pictures, and there I am by the Christmas tree, 10 years old, holding up my brand new Ozzy album, Proud as Hell. No way. You got it for Christmas from your parents? Oh, yeah. Sweet. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. Yep. Rock? You know what? It was the 80s. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> so, I can't. I don't have a little interesting tidbit for you i honestly don't remember i probably heard bits and pieces on the way to bush parties yeah um, but to sit down and listen to the whole thing i honestly don't know it probably would have been um not till like 88 or 89 really eh yeah wow. jobber yeah probably earlier i think uh bill introduced me to the album i'm pretty sure because i've been listening to the album for a long time yeah like right from junior high school at least Oh, yeah, yeah, we had uh, we, we for us at uh, in Winnipeg we had we had our AOR station. It's kind of like C Fox was in Vancouver. We had ninety two in Winnipeg, and uh, it was a big deal when it came out because uh, one of the major newspapers in in uh, in the British music press, whether it was New Music Express or one of those ones, basically said Ozzy was washed up. He's they they actually called him a boring old fart. And said yeah. that, you know, this music was just going to sound like a rehash of technical ecstasy or never say die. And it was just going to be fat old Ozzy trying to cash in on, some, on, on you know, a new band with younger guys. And I remember when I first heard Crazy Train, it, they played it whenever it came out. And it was probably early 81 when I heard it on the radio first. And I was like, this doesn't even sound anything like Black Sabbath. It's a completely different band. It's got so yeah. much energy. It's got a completely different production to it. It sounded 1980s. But it was really metal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and it is my favorite Ozzy album. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 All um, right. So, Brax, worst to first. Uh, first of all, this album is in my personal top 20 of all time. Um, to go back to the first episode where we did Van Halen in 1984, it wouldn't even be in my top 100 albums. I just did it because these three guys love it. Just wow. throwing that up. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah. I'm just starting it like that. Well, it's, it's no fair it's warning. <laughs> there was no fair warning, Jobber. You're right. No. All right. So my number nine least track. Well, again, we're going to start with the instrumental D. Yeah, I echo that statement. Why is that even on there? Sorry, yeah. guitar players. It just shouldn't be. We we got to do something and just delete all these instrumentals. The good thing is under a minute. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. It's over quick. Yeah. yeah. Like a car wreck. Wow. Just yeah. unbelievable. <laughs> uh, for me, I, I got D at number five. Oh, yeah, I love it. I mean, most most of these guitar instrumental stuff, so we can go through a bunch of Y&T albums and other stuff and 900 minute freaking Night Ranger solos. All these things. Oh, are- oh easy <laughs> on the Night Ranger. Continue. <laughs> it's it's really short. I think it's about nine seconds, minute and a half, minute forty seconds. It's it's got great. It's it's very unique, classical sounding. He dedicates it to his mom, and it it was just it was sort of a showcase to show. Randy Rhodes isn't Eddie Van Halen. He isn't all these other guys. He's a really trained classical musician who can play unique, elegant pieces that are complex harmonic and it's not too sad it's not too happy it's this beautiful little mix it's almost like Ravel or Debussy in from that era of you know late 19th century French classical music it was, I really like it it's it, that's why I'm putting it at five. Wow that's deep that is deep that is deep <laughs> go ahead <laughs> try and beat that jobber I appreciate everything JT just said there but I have to say nine uh, lowest for sure yeah um I mean it's just it, it just doesn't reach me at all. And, but I must say, I think echoing what you just said was earlier that um, uh, Blizzard of Oz really was a different direction and choosing Randy Rose was pretty bold. Oh, yeah. 
yeah. he's nothing like Tony Iommi, and there's nothing wrong with Tony Iommi, but it just re-energized. I think the split really, and you know, I'm wearing the, you know, I'm wearing the shirt, but uh, mm -hmm. when you look at the last two albums, Never Say Die, Technical Ecstasy, they're just, just struggling to stay afloat, and yeah. I think with the shift to uh, Randy Rhodes and then getting Dio in the band, Heaven and Hell, and those are all really oh, yeah. new life into them. For sure. I always trash inter instrumentals, but I do understand that they're just trying to keep the peace. Even the guy who's a, as established as Ozzy was, yeah. I'm sure Randy wanted to have his own little spotlight. So you got you got to yeah, throw him a bone. Let's be uh, honest. Sharon made him do it. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. Uh, so my number eight, I'm going to go with uh, Steal Away the Night. Um, last track on the album. There's not a bad song on this album except the instrumental, but this is definitely the weakest for me. What was that revelation you said? No, steal away the night. Oh, steal away. Should yeah. be revelation. <laughs> Whoa! I have I have steal away at number five. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I like that tune. I absolutely great guitaring. Love... Yeah, great guitaring. It, it is kind of a buried track, but I've always liked it, so I'll I'll throw it at number five. Yeah, like for me. Uh... I hadn't heard when, when I re-listened to this album recently. It was one of the few songs I hadn't heard in a few years, you know, over the radio. Uh, for me, it's number two, and or almost number one. Like I oh. love it. It it, it has this. Oh, it, it's a really, it's a really, really upbeat, um, you know, uh, track that that brings out so many things of uh, Randy's great guitar playing, rolling riffs. Um, it, and to me, honestly, it did remind me of it's a template for all Night Ranger great upbeat songs. Like Night Ranger takes all those type of rolling riffs and it really it's 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 so upbeat. It's it's so fast, punchy bass. I love Steeler than I. It's number well, two. Brad Gillis was in Ozzy's yeah. band. And That's what I was kind of thinking, too. Because you mentioned <laughs> night, that song and Night Ranger, I'm going to have to re-listen again. Yeah, it hey, is, that's what it reminded me of. Jobber. Uh, Steal Away the Night, uh, number seven. I mean, it has, a, it has the same great punchy riff, upbeat, love the chorus. Just mm -hmm. the, the competition is just too stiff in this, in this album. That's, Dropping down to number seven. Um, for me, it's No Bone Movies. Um, it, my favorite memory of this song would be a gentleman by the name of Quiggy really enjoying this song, but that's, <laughs> we'll leave that alone. All right, Rock. Um, sorry, number seven, did you say? Yeah, lost track. No Bone Movies. There's only nine. Revelation. This is my number seven. No, you gotta tell me where you've got no bone. Oh, yeah, no, okay, so number six. <laughs> and he's been, yeah, it's been a long day. So, so what'd you put? I put it at number seven. Seven, two? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. we're all good. <laughs> Don't worry, we're all good. It's, it's good. a funny, it's a funny song. And once again, I think it's kind of like, when, when, what level of things does Sharon make you do? Confess your sins is the first one, and publicly in a song where everything that you're doing wrong in your life, you need to tell everyone, Ozzy. It's like catharsis. So <laughs> I got it at number six. I like the riff. Um, it's boogie, which is kind of really unusual for Ozzy to do a boogie song. Him and Randy were more straight ahead rock, but uh, it's got some groove to it. It's not really that uh, memorable. It, it's it's just a funny subject matter that you're never going to find a song with that type of lyrical content that's so <laughs> self <laughs> that's right yeah uh, jobber uh i got number five just i have a soft spot for that song it's not soft <laughs> maybe <laughs> it's, yeah it's a way of life <laughs> just grimy riff um uh, mm -hmm. love the chorus love lyrics like i live in disgust it's it's got everything you want yeah excellent excellent <laughs> All right, my number six, uh, Revelations, Mother Earth. Um, yeah, great song. Yeah, I, I like Revelation as well, but I got it as number seven. Yeah, I just I... that one, and and that one is one of the buried tracks. It's not one of the ones that you are going to hear on Sirius. 
no. usually. No. No, and no. I, I hadn't no. I hadn't heard it in a long time. And I kind of had it mixed up with some other songs. But when I first heard it, I'm like, wow, this could be off of volume four or or master of reality. It's really dense. It's got all these really complex changes in it and everything. But yeah. it's like what, what hit me is the lyrical content is really, you know, an early ecological or environmental type save the earth type of song. And mm -hmm. so the only real political song before that, that, that Ozzy was involved in was war pigs and war pigs is incredibly effective, really brutal song that, that calls out all these really broad social issues and revelations mother earth just to me was like, eh, you gotta mm -hmm. do something socially conscious. So this is it. And it did sound really dated to me. Yeah. Or it's, it's 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 arrangement. It felt like it was something off Master of Reality or Volume Four. Where'd you put it? Uh that's my last song. Nine. Okay. Nine. Uh, eight. 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 Uh, I like the mood change, like how it shifts focus partway through the song, and uh, said what repeating what JT said. I mean, it really is the most Sabbath sounding song on the album. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and that that's actually saying something because it seems like Ozzy was going out of his way not to sound like Sabbath, but I guess he just couldn't completely escape his roots. No. no. Maybe maybe they were trying maybe Randy was trying to say that, yeah, we can play Sabbath songs. Don't mm -hmm. worry about well, it. Well, we not only that, anything. I think although he <laughs> wanted the departure, he also wanted to bring some of the Sabbath fans, right? Because at right. that point he had no money, no fans. And he was convinced his career was over, let alone the record label. So mm -hmm. I think that they tried to bring some of the Sabbath people along with yeah, him. Yeah, you wanted some of the, pro there wasn't the, the the proggy guys they wanted to, to drag along for sure. They wanted to say, hey, the, these, these you know, for lack of a better word, the put on your headphones and light up a big blunt and and listen to the, the crazy space music. Those people yeah. were still Sabbath fans out there that probably that, that was an attraction to them that, you know, or... or it could bring you in to listen to the rest of the album. Yeah. All right, moving on. Uh, my number five, Suicide Solution. That's only number five, dude. Yeah. That well, number four for me because there are some classics that are above it. But yeah, I'd put that at number four. I love it. Yeah, I've, the, I've, opening, I've, the opening riff is is classic. Yeah, same with me. I love the opening riff, Suicide Solution. Um, number four for me as well. Uh, it's 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 really if sharon if the if the if the prog fans made him do revelations and sharon made him do no bone movies i think this song is like really uh, the on, most honest kind of from somebody outside uh you know of the culture of heavy metal because he kind of created it looking inside and seeing where some of the really dark elements of that period of time of disaffected people loners isolation and all that he kind of saw it and i know that it was used in a lawsuit years later that somebody said it inspired their kid to kill themselves but the message is clearly the opposite is that mm -hmm. he goes look at me look what i did i destroyed everything around me through excess and self-indulgence you don't have to and the, the, and he was still the, just getting the, started yeah, <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> who would he probably didn't know that at the time but um mm -hmm. but yeah and i mean it's it's to me it is a really uplifting song it's really it 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 it, it, it definitely it, it creates accountability for ozzy to go forward yeah jobber uh four uh basically i like the play on words if you're thinking of alcohol suicide solution Mm -hmm. works both ways yeah. um i don't know if that's what the intention was but that's how i perceived it um love the outro solo it's, it's an all-around good song and uh yeah exactly it's not about promoting suicide i think mm -hmm. very much the tipper gore types really got that completely backwards. yeah that's a shocker huh yeah <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> number four um Actually, it's number four, but you couldn't have picked a better opening song for an album. Uh, I don't know. It's a great track. I have it at number two. Love it. Um, I love the speed of it. I, I love the chorus. Ozzy gives a great performance on it. Can't go wrong. Yeah, uh, for me, it's easily number one. 
there's no there, I when I first heard it, it was the song that blew me away. And I we still watched that old uh public broadcaster. It was a cable show in Rochester, New York. It was the first live show that they recorded with that where Sharon's made yeah. a show, shirt for Ozzy with silver tassels and sewn in sequins that says yeah. Ozzy. And it's, cool. Rudy, it's Rudy Sarzo rather than uh than um uh Blake. Yeah, right. And uh, Tommy Aldridge, you know, I think me and Ross have talked about this. Just one of the greatest rock drummers, oh, period. Easily. Just, easily. Like, there's so many albums I love Tommy Aldridge is on. And Rudy Sarzo adds a little bit of the flamboyancy for the bass line. And then it's the first time I, I think anyone ever saw Randy Rhodes. You never heard of him. That's and right. He shows his mastery of the guitar. And uh, it, it's such, to me, it's got such high energy, so much fun. I would, uh, yeah, like I never, it's it's the only song on this album, like I obviously hear Crazy Train way too much. You hear the other songs here and there, but um, I, every time I hear it, I, I feel really upbeat about it. And it's, uh, it's, it's one of my, it's, it's my favorite Oz, Ozzy song of all time, for sure. Oh, oh. Uh, that's bold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jobber. Uh, one. Just really? Oh, a couple yeah, of ones? Just, uh, I like the lyrics. I I like the, uh, the the opening riff. I I like the uh, interlude section where it gets all kind of classical and then moves into uh, free soul. And then when the solo really kicks in, it's just pure rock and roll. So, yeah, the solo is fantastic. Uh, it's, it, it's this is a hard album to rank. Like yeah. I really had to think. Well, which one? Which one's higher? Crazy Train. I mean, Mr. Crowley. It's just a tough one. It's an album full of classics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. True. Uh, number three, I've got uh, Goodbye to Romance. Um, I, I just absolutely love this song. I do find it kind of funny that they actually thought this might be a grad song for us. <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely not, but uh, great, great song at number three. Oh, wow. Um, it's a good song, and again, it's because of the quality, but I'm throwing it down at number eight. Yeah, uh, I can't. Rand Randy's hardcore, no ballads. <laughs> so, I can't. I can't really take the chorus. The rest of the song's pretty good, but the chorus to me, uh, it's it's too weepy. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, I, I and actually, I all the listening to this album when it came out, I hadn't really heard "Goodbye to Romance" because I didn't like ballads either. Until me and Bellavo moved to Vancouver and he played it on his cassette and his dad's old dots. And we were driving through the through uh, somewhere in, you know, on Highway three to get to Vancouver. And he played it. And I was like, you know, both kind of uh, nostalgic. We're leaving the Okanagan and going to Vancouver. And then also just kind of in the back of my mind, I don't like ballads, but mm -hmm. I really liked it at that time. And I hadn't really listened to it since then. And the funny thing is, when I was listening to it in the past couple of weeks, it really reminded me of a Beatles song um, mm -hmm. like it like kind of like strawberry fields. So it's kind yeah. of nostalgic and sentimental. And I think I had a really stronger feel for that when I was younger and now kind of not so much being middle-aged. <laughs> so, so what do you, what'd you put? Seven. Seven. Get jobber. Six. Um, interesting. You mentioned the Beatles. I think, well, Ozzy's a huge Beatles fan. I think he's quoted as saying once, if you, you, how could you not like the Beatles? Not liking the Beatles is like not liking air. <laughs> so I'm more of a Stones guy, but okay, I can see where he's coming from. Uh, this song is too, it's too somber to be a power ballad because power ballads kind of lift you up and yeah, get you just pumping and all that. But, um, but no, he sounds, he's, yeah, I agree um, with rock that it's, the chorus is a bit too weepy, but his voice sounds great. On it does, song. yeah. Or on this yeah. song. Ozzy, Ozzy yeah. rules. Again, like you said earlier, Jobber, throw it on Bark at the Moon, and I've got a different number sitting beside it. Yeah. Okay, my number two, Mr. Crowley. That's a beauty. That is a beauty. <laughs> I, I love the spookiness of it. His vocals are outstanding. I've got that at number three. It couldn't get to the top two spots, but I think a number three is pretty good for that tune. It's it's a great song. Yeah, I probably knew more about Aleister Crowley but than you know I should, but uh <laughs> I didn't even know who the hell he was. I don't think <laughs> Ozzy really knew either. But. <laughs> uh to me, to me, it's uh it, 
That's why Bob Daisley wrote everything. Well, yeah, did probably. probably. Who, who yeah. did the keyboard? Was that like Don Airy or? Yeah, it's Don Airy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like Geezer yeah. wrote a lot of the lyrics in uh, Sabbath too. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But yeah, for me, Mr. Crowley, it's, uh, I might have liked it a lot more 10 or 15 years ago. I when I listened to it recently, to me it's a spinal tap song. <laughs> really? <laughs> it's so it's so dramatic. It's just it's like I could see like uh a, you know uh, Ozzy singing and in the background there's like uh, a road bald crazy Aleister Crowley throwing smoke bombs and co conjuring demons. Dude, and... this isn't ghost. Mm -hmm. It's not the bad <laughs> oh, ghost. Spinal tap. God, quit being a dick. What Sorry, it's what, number eight. What did you rank it? Eight. What? <laughs> number eight. Jobber. What are the qualifications for getting somebody thrown out of the Marty's gang? I think that <laughs> might be it, actually. <laughs> Mr. Jobber. Crowley, number, number three. There you go. I mean, it capitalizes on all that satanic spookiness that freaks out parents and is a bit of a callback to Sabbath. Um, I'm sure Jimmy Page probably thought he could have written a better song about it since he was so big into into Mr. Crowley, Alistair. But um, no, I mean, it is a bit overly dramatic, but it just fits the album like a glove. It's perfect. Yep. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Okay, I mean, number one, yes, it's totally overplayed. Um, it's Crazy Train. Probably one of my most favorite solos of all time. Um, Randy Rhodes, one of my top three guitarists of all time. It's just start to finish, basically one of the greatest songs ever. Yeah, I agree. It's number one for me. Whenever I do these kind of rankings, I try my best not to punish an album or a song for being overplayed. I try yeah. and take it for what it is. And Crazy Train is just so amazing, the solo especially. Um, but again, Ozzy's voice is at classic peak form. And I, yeah. I have heard it a zillion times, but it's still hard to get sick of. I still like it. Yeah, and I, I agree. I, I, I had a bit of a struggle deciding whether I was going to put Steel Away at two or Crazy Train at two and three and, and reverse them. I ended up with three at it. And it is exactly because of what you're saying. All, all the elements of Crazy Train are amazing. When I first heard it, it blew me away. And, and if it had the same amount of, of airtime as Steel Away the Night, I'd probably like it more. But yeah. every hockey game I go to, every football yeah. game, every game you watch on TV, it's on FM radio all across at least Western Canada, everywhere. You can go to oh, Wayburn, really? Wayburn, and Saskatchewan. They're playing it in, you know, on the Northern Reserve radio. They're playing it. They're playing it everywhere. And it's because it's be I've become desensitized to its greatness that I put it at three. But yeah, the solo is incredible, mind blowing. And uh, there's it's 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 an iconic an iconic song from that period if not the most i'd say more than back in black is even yeah that's yeah, tough yeah 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 I, and i would say it's probably ozzy's most popular song easily not yeah, my I favorite say, ozzy yeah. but i i would say it's probably his most popular song like you said it's it's in every stadium so yeah, yeah. so i got it at, uh two um it's the quintessential ozzy solo song I mean, it just it's up there with uh, Paranoid. It's like they, those are yep. the two songs that must be in his live set, or else you know all hell will break loose. It's and I think yeah, the the solo it really is a showcase for Randy uh, Rhodes. Um, he's much much more tasteful, and I had same level of chops easily as Ingve Malmsteen mm -hmm. and any other shredder in the eighties. And, yeah, and, you know, and, big and, shout out to uh, Bob Daisley and Lee Kerslake. They were amazing on this album. They great playing, the tone, the production. Swapping them out later was yeah. just, I've heard that upgrade yeah. or downgrade, and it's just horrible. Yeah. Yeah. And it's we not, and, and, and nothing to the players that were on that. Too. It's just, you can't recreate that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, that's <laughs> it. Um, I am going to do this because we are not sponsored by Rockstar yet, but if anybody that works for them, a sponsorship would be great. Anyways. Okay, so here we go. The final rankings. In ninth, D. In eighth place, Revelations Mother Earth. Seventh place, No Bone Movies. Sixth, Goodbye to Romance. Fifth, Steal Away the Night. Fourth, Suicide Solution. 
third, Mr. Crowley, who's probably going to like put some sort of curse on Jason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, so number two, I don't know. And just barely in first, Crazy Train. All right. Here we go. Yeah. That's a great ranking.